them. And we went from a bar that was like October, 12 people karaoke night to about 250 and 500 last week. I didn't even go. That's our maximum capacity. And that's just, it's insanity. I want to sing. I want to be able to do some of my stuff. Some of it gets good. It just depends on the crowd. Some of the crowd is good and some of it is just, oh my god, just terrible. The hipsters just make it awful. It's not even enjoyable songs. It's like songs I've never even heard of. I'm too old. <laughs> I'm just too old anymore. I can't keep up with everybody. But this guy, back to the story really quick. I deleted him off Facebook. I'm the worst friend in the world for doing so. Um, apparently, I'm a horrible person. I'm a bitch because this person, the girl, talked to me. And I never spoke to her, but she decided she felt bad about it and she had to tell me and ask me if it was true. And it's like, uh, no. <laughs> and just, it's, even the funnier thing is, the guy, it's like, I told him I cried for you all last weekend and I doubt I'm going to have a single tear if you lose me as a friend and it's probably true. The guy turned around after I deleted him, thinking he's going to get even with me. He blocked me on Facebook. Not like I was uh, searching for him or anything, but we have a lot of friends in common, and lo and behold, either he deleted his Facebook or I'm blocked, and he blocked the other girl too, so. Don't know what to say about that. It's really ridiculous. This guy is total psycho. And I'm very sorry I wasted so much time with a toxic person. Now I feel like I have to cut my losses. I feel like um, I'm the person that just really lost out in this deal. It's, it's ridiculous. And I don't even know what to say about it. Today I'm kind of numb to the situation. It's like how many tears can you cry over somebody? I feel like last week I cried out and... Last night I feel very stupid for crying over this person, but I cared. I didn't walk away from this friendship. He shit all over it. And frankly, I'm mature enough to know I don't need this. I don't need toxic people in my life. I just want to surround myself with positivity. I want to surround myself with happy people and people that think. I don't want people that are talking behind my back like apparently he was. And anything I told him that was private, he told this girl and she told me out of embarrassment. And I'm mortified. I am completely mortified. Because on some level you think you have a level of privacy with somebody and apparently you don't have that with some people it's not sacred to some people even if you have a falling out with somebody which I have a few times I feel like you don't need to talk about those people you don't need to be bitter or hold resentment toward those people they're cutting their losses and you cut yours you go about your way you don't have to make it harder on anybody. You don't have to talk about the people. You don't have to do anything. I mean, even if you don't get along anymore, you don't break the privacy, that sacred trust that you guys had at one point, that bond. And <clears throat> I just feel like anything I said, this guy took to a megaphone and told anybody that could listen and that's really hurtful for what I've done for him and disgusting and people like him make me feel jaded and bitter angry and last weekend his mania episode started triggering some of my own and I feel like I've came down from that this week on my own. I've been trying to be positive. I've been trying to look forward 
look forward to things and I mean mentally I'm drained this weekend because of all the negativity and toxic toxicity last night but I'm trying from here on out to make it better at least I'm not crying today it's just <sighs> people I just I don't know if it's women. I find more than ever women have been the more stable people in my life than men. I feel like men right now are just, I'm starting to get better with men. I mean, so bitter. <sighs> you can't have male friends. You can't have anything. It just, which is, it's so funny to me because I always found it to be the exact opposite as a teenager and here I am having to deal with uh, men being catty and men being talkative and men dogging you. I mean, dogging you. I don't deserve that from anybody. Anybody. And I don't understand why somebody that I would call a friend would do that to me other than he's toxic. He doesn't care about anybody but himself. He proved that last night by his first text saying he never trusted anybody. And I asked him, well, I've never done anything to you. I've never, I've held you at your worst. And I've never talked about you. I've never betrayed you. And he had no comeback for that. Just, I'm sorry I made you hate me. And that is just so asinine. So absolutely asinine. Some people, I don't think they have a soul. I like to think they have a heart, and I know this guy has a bad history with like all of his family, friends, siblings, basically he didn't have anybody and it does, like one of the only people in this life they actually had and trusted and apparently he never trusted me, never gave him a reason not to, but I had to tell him, I told him straight up, game over. You talk about me, game over. I can't back anybody up that can do that. That can talk about me, disrespect me, and then turn around and say, I'm sorry I made you hate me, and that I'm sorry for my own actions. He didn't take responsibility, and that's where the fault lies. And all I can do is rationalize. And he said he did it because he was in love, which makes zero sense. Because you're building a relationship on toxicity. You're poisoning the girl's minds that you're talking to. I was totally unaware. You're poisoning my mind as a friend. Who are you? I mean, what point does this serve? This absolutely backfired in your face and I hope it was worth it. You lost the girl. She has a man. A good man. A man she's getting married to and I wish them luck. I'm happy for them. And she seems to be happy and in love. I am working on myself. I am a work in progress. I am not perfect. I am far from it. And I'm struggling day from day. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going to end up. But I'm trying to do best I can. I'm just trying to be me. I'm trying to be me in the world. I don't know where that lies right now. Like I said, everything's up in the air. One day, I feel like I know exactly what's going on. And another day, I'm just completely clueless. A lot of it has to do with the manic depression that does make your mind and thought process a little fuzzy. Some of it is very good. I should have been a motivational speaker. I do have some influence on people. 
<laughs> it feels like I do just because I I just feel like I'm the person that everybody seems to come to for advice, for friendship, advice, boyfriends, relationships, sex issues, makeup, beauty, hair, color, cut, style, fashion, philosophy. I run a huge gambit. I just, all across the board, it's not like people peg me for certain things. It just, Oh, I love this. Where do you get this? And let's talk about boyfriends. And I just, that's part of the Jesus syndrome. I call it muse, just to be funny. I just call it a non paying gig since I'm unemployed. <laughs> I think it's cute, but I just wish somehow I could make it work. <laughs>